I had it all set up. I was so organized. I've been here for like half an hour sweating. I can hear you. Good. All right. That's good to know. We have audio. Woo! All right. I was just going to say thanks to Audible Studios. And thanks to Kevin. Big ups to Kevin for making uh, making this all happen. Uh, not just by creating this wonderful world, but then saying, go for it, Luke. And uh, he's always been super supportive. So I love you. Mwah. I'm putting on my headphones because I have to listen to myself. I actually am going to record this in an actual session. There I am. Hello. I'm live. Um, all right. So here we go. Without further ado, let's just roll into it. I don't want to do much preamble. I know people are kind of straggling in, but uh, I'm excited to do this and very nervous. All right. Um, usually nobody's watching. Even when we record in a studio that has a director and an engineer, generally they're in another room and there might be like a little window, but for the most part, you're on your own to drool and spit and make a fool of yourself and nobody sees. So... Um, I am showing my appreciation to all of you by allowing you a little backstage pass to see the goofiness. So, all right, I'm hitting record. So what I see is a screen that has a, a DAW program that I can record, and there's my waveform with my voice. All right, are you guys ready? You ready? Okay. No, I'm not Kevin. I wish I was, but I'm not. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 1. The Boxer. Humans always miss the essential politeness of pugs. They see the smashed face, the eyes in a perpetual state of panic, and their tendency to freak out if you try to clip their toenails. But they don't understand why pugs get along so well with other dogs? It's the way their tails curl up and away from their asses, making them easy to sniff when you meet them for the first time. It's a great first impression. There's nothing more friendly than an easy access back door. In fact, the dogs you have to watch out for are the ones who don't want you to sniff their asses. That always means they're trying to hide something. And I say that because a good whiff of the back end tells you everything you really need to know about a hound. I've told Atticus this five billion or million or hundred times. I don't know which is right, but it's a lot. But even when he does his druid thing and shapeshifts to hound form... He refuses to inhale the wealth of information found at the rear exit of any dog we might meet. And that makes no sense. He's got the same filters in his hound nose that I have that keeps the stink from making you sick. Those are the filters that allow us to find out what else is going on in the stuff we smell. Whether it's a fire hydrant, or a tree, or a French poodle's cute curly derriere. I guess he'll never get over his human prejudices about asses. I shouldn't judge him, no. He gives me sausage, and snacks, and belly rubs. And it's not like I don't have prejudices either. I mean, for one thing, there's cats. For another... I think chihuahuas are the clearest evidence we have for alien life on Earth. And then any dog who tries to face me and won't let me check out his backside? Yeah, I think that's shadier than a walk in a cemetery. I ran into one such shady customer at the Alton Baker Dog Park in Eugene, Oregon. We live in the Willamette National Forest. Now near... Oh, I made a mistake. So that would be when I'd have to go back and I'd do my little computer thing and then it would cut in and I would hear myself say the last line and then I would punch in and fix it. Right? That's pretty cool. All right. Um, back in the old tape days when they had audio tapes, it was a much different process and much more difficult. But we're just going to pick it up. 
We live in the Willamette National Forest now, near the Mackenzie River. But Atticus takes me into town every so often so I can see other dogs besides Orla. And he can get things like bad coffee and worse donuts. He calls them sugar bombs. He always buys a newspaper full of ads for luxury automobiles, too. But he says he reads it for the articles. Whenever I walk into a park, all the other dogs are like hobbits saying, It comes in pints? Because they've never seen a hound as big as me before. They get real excited or real scared. Or real yippy like some of the small breeds who don't think I should be allowed. Yorkshire Terriers don't care. They bark at me every time. Boxers are all kinds of fun to play with. So I was excited to see one at the park. We usually get along great. I even passed by a pug who practically backed up to me by way of introduction to go meet the boxer. But this guy... Well, I knew it was a guy because I could see from a distance he hadn't been neutered. Growled at me when he thought I got too close. I wagged my tail and let my tongue hang out to let him know I was friendly. He still had his teeth bared and barked at me a couple of times to tell me to back off. That's when I realized that this boxer wasn't playing with anyone else. He'd been standing alone by a spruce tree for a reason. I would probably do that one again, too. He'd been standing alone by a spruce tree for a reason. There it is. I looked around to see if I could spot his human, but no one seemed particularly interested. Atticus was sitting on a bench reading his newspaper full of disasters. There were some other humans scattered about, but... Oh, see, I'm getting excited, and then I make mistakes. There were some other humans scattered about, some standing alone and one couple but none of them were paying any attention to the others except for the couple. They were in conversation, the man talking and the woman looking concerned. Everyone else had their arms crossed and were all looking at their dogs, making sure they didn't get into any fights. Except no one was looking at me and the boxer. Well, I didn't want to fight. I wanted to play. I lowered my front half and kept my tail in the air, wagging, a clear signal that I was friendly and just wanted to chase. I woofed at him, nice as could be. But the boxer was kind of like Tibble, this prince of cats Atticus was telling me about. A duelist looking for an excuse. His hackles raised and his growl got meaner, showing me teeth. That wasn't right. It was such a nice day. Hey, uh, Atticus? I called to my druid to our mental link. His voice answered in my head. What is it, Oberon? I'm trying to read. I had to burp there. <sighs> That's always when you're talking and you're taking in all this air, and it just, yeah. What is it, Oberon? I'm trying to read. Oh, well, I don't want you to stop your very important lounging. I just wanted you to know I might be getting into a fight here. Please don't. Just walk away. Yeah, that might not be an option. That's it. I know, I know. I just want to keep going because it's so good. But... Uh, I did get word from, uh, Mr. Hearn that we could do another one of these next week, same time, if people want, and I could finish up, uh, a few more of these pages. So kind of like a serialized, like, tune in next week for the exciting conclusion of the Purloin Poodle. And, uh, I would like to do that if you would like to do that. Look at all those hearts. Oh. So, um, anyways... If anyone wants to ask, no more, I know, me too, me too. But uh, Kevin's waiting outside with a, a lash, and he said if I read any more, he would break down the door and whip me. And I said, 
please. And then he said, okay, no. But um, that was so much fun. I'm going to stop the recording on the actual computer. So we have that all down. So you kind of get an idea, right? It's it's fun. It's fun. And the more you get into it, the more of the flow you can get and things just start rolling. Um, uh, and then those mistakes happen. And luckily, it's super easy now. You can just pop right in and, and cut in. But for the most part, you try to read as continuous as you can to keep that same energy and that same flow going so it's not too choppy. Jeffrey Kafer joined. Hello, sir. It's good to see you. Not really, but see that you're on here. Um, so, um, anybody have questions? Um, I'm going to post this again. <laughs> They're pleading with you, Kevin. Um, but uh, I love you too, honey. Um, I, can I can answer something. H how do you even do different voices? That's a good question. Um, a lot of it's physical stuff. So, uh, as you see with Oberon, it's about the mouth. He's kind of... He kind of puts everything down in his lower jaw. And I started that because if you look at these Irish wolfhounds, they're huge. So they have these big mouths. But they're not really facile, you know. They can't really move their lips very well, so things kind of get away from them. The Irish names are really hard. Luckily, Kevin is super awesome about giving me, um, you know, tips and things when I ask. And he's also not super awesome by giving me huge challenges. But I love doing that because that's what the job is so um you recommend getting into voice acting just keep trying oh, that's terrible advice um it, it's hard it's hard because this is an industry that's definitely kind of blowing up right now a lot of people listen and um what's your process for determining it's what the author says and what the character is so like i said if we're doing something with kevin and he says it's uh you know the guy from looks like jesus looks like the guy from the axe commercial then I got to go watch the Axe commercial and try to kind of mimic it. Now, I'm not like a really good mimic. I don't, I'm not really good at that. It's more about kind of finding the essence and then trying to embody that. Um, what was the hardest name? All of them. They're all so hard. Anything in Irish, old Irish is just, they have like, they just took a Yahtzee board and threw all the letters and said, that's the word. Um... Do I get hungry? <laughs> I do get hungry, Leonard. Uh, average book takes about three to five days to record. Um, my favorite voice is probably Oberon. It started to seep into my everyday life. I have to be careful to not do it uh, too much. Um, there are so many voices in my head. So many voices. Um, I did, they just kind of keep talking. How would you make a Rottweiler sound? I have one and she's a peach. Ooh, that's a good challenge. Um, is she, she's, a, she's a girl. Um, oh, that's, man, you put me on the spot. Let me think about it. The more again, I can do that. Hello, Atticus. So, Mr. Hearn chose to kill me off. Well, I'll come back. As much as I want. Say the, in a world. In a world. In a world. In a world. Sometimes I try, try different characters, yeah. <clears throat> a lot of times I just kind of go on instinct. Um, yeah, I would love to do it with other authors that I, uh, that I read for. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. I, my, one of my favorite voices is uh, from... Off to be the wizard by Scott Meyer, and that's um, Philip. And he's this somewhat overbearing British man, but he's incredibly kind. And it seems to be, as if for this one, you put everything as if you have an incredible overbite with very large teeth. Yes, snuggle pumpkin, I see you, yes, mm hmm. Uh, do I highlight them? I used to highlight when I first started for the first couple of years, and then I, I've gotten good enough that I can read ahead while I'm reading, so I don't need to anymore. Um, Owen. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh. <laughs> that one's hard. Hold on. Let me think about it for a second. Uh. Any case, you're cocking it up again. Right. No, that one's going a little bit more British. I'd have to see something Owen in front of me. Let me see if I can get a... Oh, he's not in here. Now I'm getting nervous. Ah! I can go back to Philip. That one's easy for me. 
Philip is like Stewie when he grows old and has a deeper voice. Yes. <laughs> oh, Heather Graham's great. I love her. She's done so many books, and she gives me a real workout with all of her characters. So she is good. Um, oh, God, I really want to do Owen. Um, he's... <laughs> Part of the problem is I've been recording a book and there's this guy that I'm giving kind of an East London voice. So that one's like really, I find when I do books and uh, uh, there's a certain voice that'll kind of stick, that that one kind of takes over everything. And he's this guy, I kind of got him off of, uh, uh, if you know, Idris Elba. <coughs> Idris Elba, he's got that great deep voice. He did Shia Khan in the Jungle Book. Yes, um, I don't even know what my own voice is anymore, to be honest. I guess this is it, but it's hard. It's hard to do. Read the Owen tweets here. I'll do that. That's a great idea. Thank you. Very smart. Let me pull up uh, Owen. 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 The Morrigan. Yes. Owen O. Kennedy. Where is it? I should just go to yours, huh? Are the scripts you read structured differently from the way... No, uh-uh, it's pretty much the same as that. But I read everything off of... Uh, hi, Lenny! Um, uh, I read everything off of an iPad. Um, so sometimes it gets a little bit like screen time, you know? Um, have I... <laughs> Jessica, no, I try to stay away from Oberon during intimate moments. There's just too much slobber. Well, maybe that's a good thing. Um, what did I say? Not from... Uh, yeah, he's off to be the wizard. Oh, no, I have only 10% left. Leaf, yes, Atticus. Let us spar in a duel of wits. Yes. Um, oh, there it is, Arch Steward. Very good, Annie. You're the best. Uh, let's see here. Ah, there he is. Okay. Um... I don't think there's any... No, that's not it. Oh my God, I'm going to fail. Ah, this is good though, because it shows you how, no matter how many times you do these characters, it's still, part of it's because everyone's watching, so I get more uh, in my head about it. Um, so maybe if I go off camera a little bit. Hold on, hold on. What mindset do you need? I'll answer that while I'm thinking about it. Grania whale? Uh, she, it's just that, uh, sincerity she has, and she's got a, a wicked sense of humor, too, so I try to let that play. Um, <laughs> I do talk to my dog, but, uh, uh, I actually, his dog, his voice is different. He's kind of dumb. His dog, he's a big blockhead, so he says, hey, everybody, my name is Jasper. I'm so handsome. How do I keep him consistent? I have to look back a lot of times. Uh, I have it stored on my computer so that I can go. Hal. Hal is a good one. All these ones I tend to put real low. Hal's a, Hal's a good one. Hi from Iowa. What up, Iowa? Um, aw, Brenda, thanks. Um, all right, we gotta do this Owen thing. I will, I have to do it before, before signing off. Um, a lot of times you, I'll use a, um, a word or a phrase to kind of slip into it. So, um, Irish, you know, if, uh, first we do the lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, diddly dee. Ah. Sorry, I'm cracking myself up. If you tell Kevin he's a fucking genius to his face, my, if you tell Kevin he's a fucking genius to his face, he strokes his... I can't do it. Oh, my God, I'm sweating. Uh, use the force. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're all so nice. Thank you for letting me off the hook. I am going to open this door, though, because it gets hot in here. There's only, like, four feet of space in here. Um, I, lad. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, hold on here. I will get this. Come hell or high water. Um, maybe if I do... Wait a minute. I know I got an idea. I know. Here we go. Uh, let's do... I can see his face looking at me, Owen. Kevin's just sitting there doing this right now. <laughs> uh, uh, wait. 
If you received a phone call asking who you'll be voting, which voice would you... Mo I just wouldn't answer it. <laughs> yeah, go to Phoenix anytime, Robert. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Let's check this out. Diarrhea is... <laughs> Diarrhea is inedible. I win. <laughs> I'm not that kind of hound. Diarrhea is inedible. I win. <laughs> Pure evil. Oh, man. That's good. You're welcome. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. It was super cool to meet Kevin in person. I was like a fanboy. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I was sweating as much as I am now which I always do when I get nervous. Uh, have I been to Australia? No, but I would love to. Um, uh, come to Arkansas. Yeehaw, I would. Boy, interrupt. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. Squirrel fishing, that is. I'm looking at tweets by uh, Oberon, our favorite. Oh, my God. There's so much meat on this page. <laughs> so what else? Oberon ringtones, we would love to do that. It's just so busy. It's hard to get it. Favorite book series? Of course it's the Iron Druid. Um, I like them all. I'm really lucky to get to do a lot. Do you know how many voices? You just a lot. I don't know. A lot. Although, there's really only so many you can do, so they kind of come, come to Germany. Yes, I would love that. That would be wunderbar. Uh, I love the German accent. It is sexy. I think. Uh, Wyoming would be great. Um, uh, no, I'm not in California. Too bad. Um, I still have to save face with Mr. Oberon. Um, <laughs> and not Oberon, but with uh, Owen. Owen O'Kennedy. There we go. That's right. A little bit more Irish. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit down in there, isn't it? That's better. Less than 30 minutes left to tune in for my Facebook live reading of the Purloined Poodle. Yes. Oh, I know. It's coming in now. It's not so bad. You just had to get out of your own head, boy. You were cocking it up before. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's much better. Stop cocking it up, Irish. You Irish boy, stop it. Hey, we did it! You guys are awesome. Uh, what was that you were drinking? Lol, I wish. No, this is just water. There's Owen. That's right. There it is. Once you get it, it comes right out easy. That's right again. It's a little bit different than the Irish that uh, I do for the fae or for the fairies. Those are my favourite, though. The fairies can talk like this. We can get real high with them, and they can be real annoying because fairies are. Yes. You're literally sitting here flailing your arms in squee. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy I was able to figure it out. <laughs> Yay! No, you were awesome. Um, oh, this is so great. I could do this forever. Oh, and he's in the house. Yeah, but I'd rather be out in the field, picking some mushrooms, eating some feckin' herbs. Ugh. When I'm not, how do I spend my time? All I do is read, take care of my family, and sleep. That's pretty much it. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, group cast recording on a book. I have, but only with two people in the room. Usually, if there's more than that, they do it segmentally. Someone asked if I've done a group cast recording. There was one, actually. I did... Um, a book and we had about five people in the room so there was one that was a long time ago though generally now um uh uh everything's done at home studios so they just kind of cut it all together gotta go see i think that's it people are ready to <laughs> no i'm not uh you guys are great um i love your voice too but i don't even know it aaron but i bet it's a beautiful one yeah, you put it right in the front of your mouth as if the words just just want to spill out. That's part of it. You rock too, Luke. See what I did there. Oh, good, good, good. 
That's great. So why don't we make it, we had two minutes left. I'll make it a half an hour. We started at eight, a little late because I had the technical fumble, but um, uh, two more minutes. Anything else? I'm in my studio in my home. Um, and no, you can't know the address. Uh, thank you, Annie. You're awesome. You are awesome. Um, you guys are my favorite. Uh, I, I went to, I was an actor for years. That's Someone asked how I trained. Um, I got my uh, uh, BA from Western Michigan University, and I got my master's from UConn. Uh, go Huskies. Um, so uh, it, it helped. It really did. I had a lot of voice and dialect classes that helped do that. So, uh, yeah, linguistics helps. Learning about linguistics helps. Um, I'm really interested in languages, and I listen constantly to how people talk, and then I try to steal it. <laughs> Maybe it will be a regular thing. Who knows? Someone asked if we could do this as a regular thing. All right, everybody, I'm going to try to wind it down. I have a golden retriever named Jasper, or J.P. Morgenstern, and he's my snuggle pumpkin. Um, and I have my studio is a studio bricks. It's um, actually something I ordered from Spain from Barcelona and it was sent over on and we assembled it and it's awesome. I really love it. Um, I have to say go green. I see the Wolverines thing and they're great too. But if I don't say go green and support state, then I'm going to be in big trouble tonight. Um, what's your favorite word you picked up from Kevin? Feck. Definitely feck, because it's not like you're swearing, because it's not a real swear word. You say feck instead of the other one, which would be bad. Bye. Bye, Brittany. Thanks for watching. We'll come back live again soon. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sticking with the little technical thing at the beginning. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, I get your dog's name, Jasper. Oh, and he's a chihuahua. Chihuahuas are the Sure sign of alien life on this earth. <laughs> All right, that's 8.30. Thanks, everybody. I'm signing off. Have a great night.